In this last video we'll see the connection between the Shannon entropy and the physical entropies Boltzmann, Gibbs and von Neumann. The connection to the thermodynamic entropy will only be through those. In classical statistical mechanics you have two main formulations for the entropy. The Boltzmann entropy Kb log W and the Gibbs entropy minus Kb rho log rho. So the Gibbs entropy is simply Kb times the Shannon entropy while the Boltzmann entropy is approximately equal to Kb n Shannon entropy. The fact that there is a factor of n should already be a hint that the two expressions cannot be the same thing. But right now we want to focus on the Kb, which seems to be an important difference. What is it? What does it signify? Previously we saw that a dimensionless constant simply corresponds to a change of units for the variability. But Kb is not dimensionless, so there must be something else going on. Recall that the thermodynamic entropy is defined by looking at the heat transfer delta Q at a given temperature T over a reversible process. To make things more precise mathematically, we have an equation of state that gives us the internal energy of the system given the entropy and other macroscopic variables. The temperature is the partial derivative of U with respect to S. Dimensionally, if we define units for temperature and energy, entropy defined like this must be energy over temperature. This picture is called energy first and is not the only way to do it. We can express the equation of state in terms of the entropy, so we have entropy first. In this picture we typically leave S as a pure number and define beta as the derivative of the entropy with respect to the energy. So beta must be 1 over energy. In case we want temperature we have beta equals 1 over kBT, but this is in a sense optional. The point is that you can do all of thermodynamics with beta without T and Kb. In fact you may have noticed how T in most thermodynamic expression is paired with a Kb. Personally I think there are many things that make the entropy first approach work much better conceptually, but that's a topic for another video. The point here is that the Kb is just a constant to convert beta to temperature. It does not set a physical scale like the speed of light. In fact, we are still completely free to choose the units of entropy, energy and temperature. It is essentially the choice of units that determine the constant Kb, because temperature, entropy and energy are not quantities that are independently defined. So the Boltzmann constant is set by the unit system, it does not represent a fundamental physical relationship. In fact, the von Neumann entropy is usually written without Kb. Next we need to talk about the difference between microstate and macrostate. At the simplest level we have a particle. Let's say I represents a set of all states for a particle. In classical mechanics it would be all the possible values of position and momentum, R6. This is also sometimes called mu space. At a level above we have a microstate, which is the state of a group of particles. N is the total number of particles and I is the number of particles in a particular state I. J is the set of all possible microstates. For example, in classical mechanics, a macrostate is represented by the position and momentum of all the particle, r to the 6n. This is also sometimes called gamma space. There is an issue here that the permutation of particles should be the same microstate, but there are different points in r6n, so one has to be careful. Alternately, we can represent a microstate as a statistical distribution rho p over single particle phase space. This is not a probability distribution, it's a statistical distribution. We actually have n particles at the same time. The last level is a macrostate, which is an ensemble, a probability distribution of microstates. In the context of thermodynamics and fluctuation theory, the best way to understand the probability is, I think, in terms of fluctuations within a small delta t. All macroscopic variables, for example pressure, are averages in time. Particles do not exert pressure at an instant, they need time to bounce off a surface. If you're doing out of the equilibrium thermodynamic, it may be better to think of the probability as coming from repeated experiment, but no matter the case, you have one microstate at a time, sampled from a population that is determined by the physical process you chose. We have Pj, the probability to have a specific microstate, and this is usually represented by a distribution rho m over the multiparticle phase space. But a macrostate is also defined by the macrostate variables, which are, as we said, averages. I leave the details of how exactly these are related for some other time, it doesn't really play a role here. The whole point here is that there are two distributions and two possible variabilities to calculate. We could look within a microstate, look at the variability of the particles, where they are in similar states, or look at the macrostate. 
see whether the microstates are similar to each other. The first one leads to the Boltzmann entropy, and the second to the Gibbs entropy. And the last one, the Gibbs entropy, is the one that connects to the thermodynamic entropy. So let's start with the Boltzmann entropy, Kb log w. Given a microstate, it tells us the variability of the particles within the microstate. For large n, this is approximately equal to the variability within the distribution over particle states, rho, times the number of particles. The factor of n makes physical sense because the entropy is an extensive quantity. In fact, the normalized distribution rho would not change as n increases, so h of rho remains the same. If it is multiplied by n, it becomes an extensive quantity. So the Boltzmann entropy is technically not the variability of a single particle within a microstate, but the variability of all the particles. That is why it's connected to the permutation. The more permutations, the more the particle can be switched around. The important thing to understand is that the Boltzmann entropy is a property of the microstate. It can go up and down as the microstate changes. So it does not correspond to a thermodynamic entropy, which is a property of a macrostate. The Boltzmann entropy will fluctuate at equilibrium, so it won't be constant. The microstate with the highest Boltzmann entropy will typically be the most likely one, so you can think of the system fluctuating around it. But there is no equilibrium microstate, Therefore, there is no equilibrium Boltzmann entropy. This is extremely important to understand because there is a lot of literature, especially old literature, that assumes it does, which leads to a lot of misconceptions. So always make sure to understand what people are talking about. Now let's talk about the Gibbs entropy. This is simply the Shannon entropy applied to a macrostate. It gives us the variability of the microstate within a macrostate, essentially how much the microstate is jiggling around. In microstates at higher entropy, there are wider fluctuations. Note that in this case, there is no n. It's a probability distribution. We only have one microstate at a time, so we're interested in the variability of a single microstate. But it depends on n through the distribution. The dimension of the space of microstates is 6n. If you change n, you change the space over which rho m is defined. Unlike the Boltzmann entropy, the Gibbs entropy is not a property of the microstate, but a property of a macrostate, of the ensemble. At equilibrium, the probability distribution stabilizes, the jiggling is maximized, and it is constant. So the Gibbs entropy does correspond to the thermodynamic entropy. The von Neumann entropy in quantum mechanics is the quantum analog of the Gibbs entropy, so we're not going to look at it specifically. Now, the Gibbs and the Boltzmann entropy can coincide, which makes the thing even more confusing, but only in a specific case. Suppose we have a large number of particles, all independent, all identically distributed. So the row distribution factorizes, they're independent, to the same row hat, they are identically distributed. So if you do the math, you see that for independent distribution, the Shannon entropy sums. Essentially, you have the log of the product, which is the sum of the log, and each distribution integrates to one. So in that case, the Gibbs entropy will be the entropy of the product of rho hat n times, which means it's n times the variability of rho hat, which is approximately the Boltzmann entropy. So in this specific case, the variability within a macrostate is approximately the variability of the particle within a single microstate. But this is not always the case. This is a special case. Yet another source of confusion is that, especially in a research paper, People define distribution and entropies in different ways, so the same names are used differently by different authors. So I encourage you to always go back to the definition being used and see what they mean. Look at their distribution, what does it represent, do they have a clear definition? Then you can apply the general idea of variability, which we saw it always works, to that particular case, and therefore understand what exactly they're talking about. A clear understanding of a problem is 90% of the solution. To sum up, we have seen that the Shannon entropy is a general concept which can be applied to any subject that has sets of things distributed over some properties, which is basically everything. Statistical mechanics does have sets of things and distributions, so we can apply the concept in this specific case. It is specific also because we're using special spaces where the Shannon entropy is coordinate independent. We also saw that the Boltzmann constant Kb is really there to fix the unit system and does not provide any additional physical contact. It's not like the speed of light which fixes a sort of absolute scale on that quantity. We saw that we have two types of distributions, 
Microstates are statistical distribution of particles, and macrostates are probability distribution over microstates. The Boltzmann is the variability of the first, and the Gibbs entropy is the variability of the latter case. The von Neumann is like the Gibbs entropy, but for the quantum cases. The Boltzmann entropy and the Gibbs entropy coincide only if we have a large number of particles that are independently and identically distributed. And also remember that the Gibbs entropy is the one that corresponds to the thermodynamic entropy. So this may be a lot to digest, but I believe that once you do, you should have a much easier time navigating through all these concepts. So I hope this helps.